judging. Uh, the judging process was incredibly well managed this year. And certainly it was last year as well, but it went more quickly and more smoothly uh, this year. So um, I think that the judges were uh, even better focused and more focused on the wines rather than the process of, of actually having to, to judge and, and rate wines. Well, it's always hard to pick the best because there's so many. Um, we would be here for hours if I were to, to select, in many more that I would like to select. There, were, there was no sparkling wine, for example. Um, that would have been wonderful to have included. Um, and, and many other types of dessert wines as well, and a few other whites. Um, certainly, uh, Romania makes a lot of uh, white wine, for example, and so in other countries. So, um, the, the, the wines that I chose were wines that I know well. Um, that I have tasted many times, um, that I have appreciated for a number of reasons. Um, and particularly with regard to the red wines, I wanted to try to choose uh, wines that have a little bit of age on them, um, which again just shows the uh, complexity that the wines can develop in bottle and time. Uh, it's changed a lot. Um, okay. It's definitely changed a lot. It was uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears getting there, but it was worth it. Um, since um, right before I became a master of wine, I went independent. I had been buyers for restaurants, high-end restaurant groups, and high-end retailers prior to that. And I love buying. Um, I love the numbers <laughs> aspect and also providing people with fantastic wines and sourcing them myself. Uh, but it's a lot of fun to be independent and to be able to travel around the globe meeting um, all sorts of different people from different countries because the wine community is so warm and hospitable and energized. Well, my cellar is pretty diverse, and I live in New York City, so I'm very lucky to have a selection of a lot of wines from around the world. Our selection of Balkan wines is fairly small at this time, um, but as I mentioned with the Sabrosa, um, I, I have that at home. Um, we, I certainly have the Sigilas uh, that, uh, Sirtico that was in my presentation at home. Um, but how I shop for a bottle of wine is um, pretty random. Sometimes it's something that I've tasted before and I know. Sometimes, especially if the bottle is inexpensive, I'll just go buy an array of things to see what I like and to discover new wines. Because I'm always writing about wines, I need to constantly be discovering things. And though I attend a lot of trade tastings um, in New York, in London, and elsewhere, I don't always get to try everything. Yes, I have, I have been told that I should like the sweet wines before because I'm a lady. Uh, it takes a lot of energy, for sure. Um, it does take being extremely carefully organized. It's easy for things to slip through the cracks. And uh, certainly, uh, journalists are known for being late and missing deadlines, and that's the last thing that I want to do. Uh, so I, um, I keep everything electronically organized in my wonderful iPhone and I constantly review my calendar to make sure that everything is, is on track. It's usually pretty easy. The wine industry again has, okay. is full of so many great people. Um, it's, yeah, sometimes you need to tiptoe and be careful and politically correct. Um, depending on what the issue may be. Um, I think the most important thing is for me that everyone, um, everyone should have an opportunity to voice an opinion um, about why, and especially consumers as well, um, whether or not they know that much about wine. The fact that they can enjoy wine means that as an industry should be positive to them to encourage them to continue to participate. Okay. Well, and also there's so much to learn about and why. You're never always going to be right, you'll make mistakes, and you're never going to know everything because yes. things change so rapidly. Well, first of all, I would say that I would love to see more Hungarian wines in my country. Yes. Um, we don't have that many. I see some occasionally when I'm, I'm living in London. Yes, but we're, you know, we're, we're I, the USA is a country that makes lots of small production wines too, so that's okay. Uh, we would just like to get some of them. Please share with us. That 
mine's in Bulgaria is looking at coming into the U.S. So I hope to, uh, to see the wines there soon and for people to continue to learn more about Bulgarian wines there. Um, I, I have a, an answer that I think not all women would agree with, but I have never found uh, any sort of uh, prejudice or any sort of glass ceiling. Um, I'm lucky. I live in New York City. Um, I'm also um, perhaps a little bit blind. Maybe I'm not seeing some of that that's around me. But I don't, I, I've never felt restricted or put into a box because I'm a woman. I really feel like the wine industry is full of equal opportunity. Um, and certainly where I am coming from, I know that's not the case everywhere. Uh, but full of opportunity, and as long as you're competent, um, gracious, and hardworking, you can go a long way. Take great notes, ask lots of questions when you take great notes. Um, check the facts. And, um, and um, just try to portray the joy of the wine industry in your writing.